So, Dickie, it's all yours. Uh, thank you, and thank you for this opportunity to come clean about um, how concurrent diseases can have devastating effects on farms and the will to control BVD sometimes does not work in practice. This uh, case study involves a relatively small, for our area, 120 cow dairy herd. I work in the southwest of England, um, just west of Mike Kirby, where dairy farming is uh, of high density, large herds, um, and in an area where tuberculosis and BVD are both endemic. About 10% of our herds are actively infected with BVD and about 15% of our herds are actively infected with bovine tuberculosis. This farm comprises 120 cow, uh, high yielding cows um, in an isolated unit and rather interestingly is a herd which is uh, the adult cows are totally confined uh, 365 days a year in a single barn and milked through an Alpha Laval guided robotic milking system. This effectively means that each and every animal within the barn is steered through a process through the day of feeding, lying down, and if it requires milking, the robots select it for milking and put it through the robotic milking machine. On, it, on average, each cow gets milked three times a year, but the guided system... Three times a year, dear? Three times a day, yeah. sorry. The, <laughs> the system allows the farmer to keep cows of all status, whether they're dry, milking, uh, young stock breeding in the same shed, because the guiding system determines whether they get milked or not. But on the face of it, this is a disease disaster if you introduce infection into that herd. First of all, from the BBD perspective, this herd and the farmer are not uh, people who have engaged closely with any veterinary intervention. They are difficult people to deal with despite being extremely good farmers and well uh, manage their stock. But we managed to persuade them to become involved in a funded BVD program in 2011, which we had in the Southwest, which allowed us to investigate the status and the risks of BVD to the farm. In short, we found that the herd was BVD free, but had significant risks of entry and very high risks of spread should BVD get into the farm. And that information allowed us to persuade the farmer to vaccinate the herd as a preventive measure in case BVD should come in. Unfortunately, he took that advice and as far as we were aware, he was vaccinating his herd on a regular basis with annual boosters. The bovine tuberculosis story is similar. It was BVD, uh, sorry, bovine tuberculosis free and officially classified as a TB free herd. It had high risks because a neighboring farm had actually had tuberculosis, as so seen here in red on the map. The farm that we're talking about is shown in green. The risks of TB entering the farm were not only from the neighboring farm, but there were significant wildlife risks where we have a reservoir of infection in badgers in the southwest, and in fact, all over the country now. And there were known to be badger sets and badger habitats in close proximity to the herd. But despite that, the farm had remained TB free for several years until we discovered it in uh, 2015. Bovine tuberculosis in the UK is a regulated program where all herds are tested annually and in particular high risk areas are tested every six months. The herd had been regularly tested annually using the single intradermal comparative cervical tuberculin test, the standard test, for the detection of tuberculosis in Europe and had tested clear in July 2014 and March 2015. We did have eight what are called inconclusive reactors 
in January 2014, but on retest, these tested clear. But this may be an indicator that disease had actually got into the herd and the skin test was not finding them. However, in December 2015, and the dates are quite important, a slaughterhouse case, a cow that was sent in for slaughter simply as being a cull cow, a barren cow, was diagnosed at post-mortem with lesions of tuberculosis in its lungs. This immediately prompted an investigation um, by the State Veterinary Service and as soon as we could, a repeated uh, skin test for the whole herd. And in that skin test for tuberculosis in February 2016, we found 25 reactors which were sent for slaughter um, under the regulatory system where compensation is paid by the government and nine with lesions at post-mortem examination, tending to suggest that tuberculosis had been endemic in this herd for several weeks or months prior to our testing. Tuberculosis control is taken over by the State Veterinary Service and we as private vets have relatively little to do with it at this point other than routine testing. So the disease control for tuberculosis is put in, hand, in the hands of the state. But what we noticed as private vets is that at the same time there was a significant amount of other things, other diseases going on in this herd which had not happened before. We operated on four displaced abomasums, most of which had an extremely poor prognosis. Three out of four had to be culled through lack of uh, effects of the surgery. We looked at the diet and we found uh, subacute ruminal acidosis where the cows were not being fed properly. The farmer noticed an increased incidence of clinical mastitis and then we started seeing respiratory disease and scour in the calves, joint lameness in the adult cows where we diagnosed mycoplasma bovis, and frank pneumonia in adult cows, most of which did not survive. We introduced a, a surveillance and testing program to see if we could get to the bottom of this, and the initial thought that this was a dietary problem brought about by the stress and the disturbances of the TB outbreak where really management and husbandry had gone wrong. We had a fairly rudimentary BVD surveillance program going on using bulk milk PCR testing because we would had assumed that the herd was vaccinating and we find bulk milk antibody a useless test in vaccinated herds so we used routine BVD PCR testing for bulk milk as an overall cheap way of screening in vaccinated test, uh, virus negative herds. And sure enough, in December 2016, shown here in red, we found virus in the bulk milk, which really set alarm bells going. So in summary, we had some evidence of subacute ruminal acidosis, poor general health, and on our investigation, once we found the BVD virus, we found that the farmer, from his own choice, had ceased to vaccinate in 2014 as an economy. And this is what we commonly find with vaccine programs, is that they're done with enthusiasm for a few years, and then, because the herd tests negative, everybody's happy, farmer ceases to continue with the vaccine program. Our investigation for the BVD, looking for the virus positive, um, meant that we started testing young stock and heifers, and sure enough, we found a persistently infected breeding heifer, which was being kept in with the adult herd in the milking barn because of the availability of using the guided system. It was circulating, not being milked through the robots, but circulating within the herd. It in fact had been brought into the herd as a young breeding heifer and had remained there because it couldn't get pregnant. And um, so consequently it was the worst case scenario where 
a persistently infected animal had been inserted into a susceptible, naive population which was being showered with bovine tuberculosis at the same time. And we've got this mixture of pathogens being moved around in a very confined environment. So what did we do? This is a picture of that confined environment um, with a smoke test going on to check for ventilation. And you can see if you've got pathogens that can be moved either by the respiratory or the fecal route, um, then you've got a very high hazardous environment in which to keep animals. And this persistently infected heifer was kept in this very shed with one, all 120 milking cows and about another 10 um, pregnant and uh, bulling heifers. Well, immediately that uh, cow, that persistently infected heifer, 911, this was a number, was removed and slaughtered, and we went on a PI search to find others. But in fact, none were found. We introduced then a, a robust BVD surveillance system and immediately vaccinated all breeding females right down to four months old with a uh, live vaccine. And remember, at the same time, we are running a tuberculosis control system and culling significant number of animals that were tuberculosis infected all in the same time. We went into partnership with the state veterinary service and got together to see um, if we could control both these diseases because it was becoming evident that the whole thing was intermixed. And it's a lesson that you cannot control one single patho pathological disease or um, infectious disease without control and interest in the other. So we improved the ventilation, we reduced the stocking density, um, we made life a lot easier for those cows. Where are we now? Well, the good news is that the herd is now classified as TB free. So TB has been eradicated, but as at huge cost. 129 animals um, uh, have been removed as tuberculosis reactors, tuberculosis infected cattle. And a further nine animals have left the farm as no, uh, no value culls killed on farm for other disease reasons. And it's very interesting that of the 120 milking cows that he had producing 12,000 litres per cow per year at the start of this outbreak, only seven survived. The rest were killed either through having tuberculosis or through having some other concurrent disease. We've cleared the herd of BVD and it's now fully vaccinated with live vaccine. And we are now doing young stock screens, but this is quite difficult because we're vaccinating right down to four months of age. So we're using, a, a, we have sentinel bull calves that we use as indicators for the presence of virus and we use uh, antibody tests on those to detect if virus is present in the herd. And in fact, it isn't at the moment. They're all testing negative. So what's my conclusion? What's the, what have I learned from this? Well, bovine tuberculosis is an infectious disease where latency is common. If you look at the human situation, and about one third, two billion people of, uh, are infected with human tuberculosis, and a lot of research has been done to find what uh, moves those latent infections in humans to overt and shedding. And the commonest reason is HIV infection, um, which is an immunosuppressant. And second commonest reason is dietary stress. And so we would effectively introduced both these issues into this herd at a time when uh, bovine tuberculosis was circulating. So we have a situation where we've reduced resi resilience, we've increased shedding and increased the infective load, and the, perhaps the outcome in hindsight is not surprising. The second thing that the state veterinary service have introduced and what are now concerned about is that the presence of BVD virus circulating actually reduces the sensitivity of the skin test. And uh, in the results that we'd shown, uh, we have in very high risk, high prevalence herds, there is a secondary testing system used for the detection of infected cattle to bovine tuberculosis called gamma interferon. This was run on this herd and only 10 days after a skin test had removed 25 reactors, 
we performed a gamma interferon and found a, a further 37 animals infected with gamma interferon. So we have to be aware that BVD may actually reduce the sensitivity of the skin test in the detection of bovine TB. Thank you.